Nugget Boy's back. Nugget no. Boy's in Japan. My wife giggled. <laughs> I'll eat you from the inside out. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I mean, how? I moved around once to one side and almost dropped my phone at what I saw. It's late at night, the rain's coming down, and I see his fucking face. Get in me van. I've got a knife. As I passed the front door, I thought I heard a faint scratching sound from the other side. It's that it nugget bastard. My mum and I, being spiritual people, immediately assume it's a ghost. It was unsettling enough to see evidence of a person stalking my family, but a person who hadn't aged in 33 years? Her eyes were bloodshot and thirsty. She was perhaps most hauntingly eyeing the camera. Welcome to, to episode, episode 65, 65 of, of Ghost, Ghost Hunts. You are right, Hannah? No, I am not <laughs> okay. Go on, tell the listeners <laughs> Yeah, dirty stuff out. I haven't been to bed. She's not been to bed. I couldn't do that. I didn't think I could. And then it got to a certain time and I was like, I can't go to sleep because if I go to sleep, I'm not going to make the pod. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, you're wearing mesh. I'm wearing the same outfit as I was last night. Do you oh, know why? are you? Because I didn't go to bed. Oh, you, oh, you've literally come straight from... I've got my Jamero quiet coat on. Having a, a raucous time, wow, too. Honestly, I just don't think I have it in me anymore. It was a little test. I think you do, though, because yeah. you're here and talking. Yeah, but, like, I've got an hour in me. That's it. And then I'm going <laughs> to... And then, then you're going to die. Over. Well, that's great. Maybe this will add a bit of a, a man. But I'm excited. Why? I don't know. Just to be here. <laughs> just to be here. Just to be, be here. alive. It's, um, yeah, I don't even know what day it is. I don't know what's happening. It's the day after but... Valentine's Day. So oh, happy... yeah. Did you have a nice Valentine's Day? Do you know what? I actually did, but I think men really have got on my fucking tits They've, this week. You've got the ick. Like, no, no, no. This is, I've got two, I've got two bits of like fucking... Clothes things to Let's talk go. about right Let's so the go. first one is at my local train station can't wait um there is a taxi rank and when i come back late from gigs i'll just jump into a black cab and be like do you know what I, like i'll just offset this this is something i need to do Very it's a 20 class. minute walk yeah. back home and i can't uh, like... what what yeah it's a 20 minute walk yeah and it's 20 minute walk and therefore also uber i can't use because the app doesn't work for me and my free now is a bit patchy so I oh just my jump god in the it's a cab. wonder that your legs even work like have you yeah. not how have you not fell through a train <laughs> well i'm worried about that so yeah, I get in the be, fucking yeah, cab, cab yeah. anyway you'd think right black cab so i get in the black cab yeah and you know what it's like with a fucking mm. driver who's chatty you just end up being like in order for you not to murder me i'll have a polite chat yeah so he's like, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I was staying at my parents' house. Oh, you, you don't, you don't They're live... They're definitely in. Uh, yeah, you don't live with your husband. No, actually, I broke up with my boyfriend. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to Anyway, um, that happens. He's like, oh, you know, he's like, oh, you, you look 28. And I think you look like a teacher. And I was like, oh, I don't know what to make of this. Mm, history. He's this fucking, like, I don't know, middle-aged Lebanese man, right? Anyway, mm. uh, like, imagine Omid Jalili. Right. But actually more stocky. Wow. Yeah. And anyway, so I get off and I'm like, oh, that was a weird conversation, whatever. He's trying, he's <laughs> get off, to... lol. <laughs> and he's trying to like... So I have a wank and No, he's it's... absolutely vile. And then um, I was like, oh God, he was just trying to pay me some compliments. It was it was a little bit creepy, like odor creepy, but nothing like massive. Anyway. Why, get... do you have, why do you have to do that? Oh, it's just, it really fucked me off yeah. that we had this conversation at all. Then I get in the cab again late at night and it's him. And he starts going again. He's like, oh, so I remember you don't have a husband and you're still single, are you? And starts going wow. on and on and on. And I was like, oh, and I was looking at my phone, pretending to be distracted. And at the end, he was like, how do you feel about being single? How do you feel about it? And like, as I was what? outside of the cab, outside of my house, and I was a bit like, oh my God. And then the third time I looked at the taxi rank, it's late at night, the rain's coming down and I see his fucking face and the, the front of the queue. I walk. Oh my God. And I was like, it's him. And then I had to get in and I was like texting like people I know being like, just FYI, this is his cab number. Just so you know, if I die, it's this man. Yeah, yeah. But also, like, it, it really fucked me mm. off that I'm like, first of all, that I was honest with him. I'm fucked off at myself that I ever told him that I was single. And then, like, 
how annoyed I am that he's bringing this. It's so inappropriate. Yeah, it's just like, can we not just get a 10 minute cab? Yeah. I mean, you don't you ask about my fucking marital status and chat. try and hit on me. Like, yeah. Oh, it really annoys me. So that's, I. sorry, but oh it's a bit of an God, angry. That is so, it's just I've so just infuriating. And that yeah. on Valentine's Day, and I was just like, do you know what? On like, Valentine's that, Day. It says it all. Do you know what I mean? It's like the day it of... just, they cannot <laughs> give it a bloody rest. Let's just give it a fucking rest, guys. Oh. Anyway, so how Here are you? Are. You've you've not slept. I am, honestly, I think on the cusp of a mental breakdown. <laughs> but other than that, yeah. real Did gosh. you enjoy the gig? I thought it was really funny. It was fun, wasn't it? There was someone else that annoyed me. Oh, yeah. I won't say her name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she's one of the worst people I've ever met in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do know who you mean. Oh, uh, we we, we, we get them all at my gig. Come there was down. This, there was that Susie was emceeing, doing a fabulous job. And there was just this woman that just would not shut up. It's like Susie was taking the piss out of spoken words. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. What, lols. And then the woman in the middle was like, well, I actually do spoken word. And yeah. Susie is I said it made me feel sick. Said, well, do you want to do something? And she was like, um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm glad I didn't remember to. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm pleased you didn't because she was ready and waiting. She was primed with a notebook. But also, I don't think I knew in my head how to have made that funny if she had got up and started rapping. Yeah, I was rapping. like, I don't know what's happening. Like I, a, a white woman rapping to a beat. I'm rapping. like, I Is that what spoken word is? Well, if she'd done something like that, I would have died I thought it was a poem. The spot. Sometimes. Wow, so it is vague. It's fake. The thing is, it's just not for me. If you if you do spoken word, no, fair I, fucking yes. But I just can't. I don't think, I, because I don't know what spoken word actually is, I don't have a problem with it per se. Oh, you've but never what seen I it? Do, I don't know what it is. I thought it was oh, poetry. Fine. And well, I don't it sort like of poetry. Is, yeah, but it's like but a poetry what, is a like, yeah, it's like rap poetry. No. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. Get in me van. I've got a knife. Like that. <laughs> yeah. That made me feel horrendous. <laughs> I No, listen. I have to clarify this. Spoken word is fine. It was just that she... It was all about her, wasn't it? Yeah. It was the... I can't say her name. Let's call her Florence. Mm, mm, mm. It was the Florence show, wasn't yeah, it? It yeah. was like, I have to make a comment. I have to do that. Have and she was so cringe. Yeah, and it was hard to kind of have a bit of banter with her because there was a she had an agenda She's to try. Very and, sincere. Yeah, uh, and gosh. but we got we got there. I mean, a few it was people, very funny. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Good, ten out of ten. Yeah. Well, um, microchipping a man, I love that bit. If you uh, want to, if you want to yeah. hear more about that, go and see another one of Susie. Susie, go and see another one of Susie's gigs at the exhibit, Ballam. Ah. <laughs> okay, um, right, Hannah, can we do, um, you obviously are out of your mind I... and you've left the tarot <sighs> and that's fine, but we're going to do it online. The tarot is in stoke. Honestly, I don't know what's happening. Get my reading. Do you know what else fucks me off about the bloke who takes me home and asks about my marital status yeah. is that he knows where I live. That's creepy, isn't it? Because he's oh, dropped me is. to my door it's a bit thrice. Thrice. Yeah. Um, Have you told him that your parents are definitely at home? Yes, I've never said that they're like away, but like, uh. but it, uh, like honestly, since this has happened, I'm like, I wake up and I'm like, he could be outside. I'll just drop kick him in the head. Yeah, listen, I, I want a gun. <laughs> oh, they make me so angry, these people. Oh. Um, okay, so the card that we've picked is the fool. <laughs> Have Feels you just... very appropriate <laughs> for today. Have you literally just picked it? Yeah, it's there. There he is, oh. the fool, what does everybody. It mean? Oh, I don't feel like it's good. You okay. you feel discontent, yeah, or uneasy, yeah, and feel a need for a change in your life, yeah, like a sleep. A new direction, perhaps even an adventure. Oh. You might not know where you want to go, just that you don't want to stay where you are. Oh, it says listen to your inner feelings and take a leap of faith. Hard disagree. What about embrace new beginnings and the expansion of your new horizons? Well, <laughs> well fine. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This deck has pulled out five cards. And the third one is S and M. What do you mean? Have a look at that. Have a look at that wee lassie. S and M. This that people are naked. Oh, the devil. Oh. Yeah, but they're all. Why they're is all it saucy. so? That is so. I rank. think I've clicked on the wrong. No, website, to be honest. you're afraid that it's out of control. You cannot resist p passionate attraction. Oh, do you know oh, what? I'm fucking. Dumb. I'm sick I'm of people done saying. With that. You can't resist passionate attraction. The one thing I don't want is passionate attraction. That sounds so exhausting. Yeah. I can't be asked for that. Passion? 
<laughs> yeah. oh, no, thank you. No, thank no, you, No, thank you. Just desperate housewives and oh. a chicken tikka masala. Oh, my fucking God, I'm going to have that What tonight. a night in. What a night in that is. It's a shame you're not coming over later because I have a king prawn Thai curry. Oh, I, don't, I honestly don't. I, would, I don't think I could make the journey. Yeah. Fair. I don't even get that. But I have to say, went to Chinatown the other night. I had an eight-pound Chinese. It was amazing. Oh, that's nice of you. A buffet. I don't like bao, buffet. but I like No, it wasn't bao, it was Chinese. No, it's Chinese. Fine. Right, I'm going to go into okay. part three of Dear David. Oh, great. I'm just checking on the pug and he's not on the camera, so... Is he alive? Correct. Who knows? Okay, so um, this is our third part of Dear David. We left off where he's like checking in on his apartment and he's now going to Japan for two weeks. Oh, remember? yes. Yeah. So he said... What's he going to Japan for? He's not said yet. Business, pleasure? I guess business. Maybe biz and pleasure. Biz and pleasure? Biz and pleasure. Wow. Um, what a guy. So he's saying thanks to everyone who's like commented on his thread. It makes me yeah. feel like I'm not going through this alone. See you in a couple of weeks. Mm. Right, so we go back in. Um, <clears throat> it's my last full day in Japan. The past couple of weeks have been pretty peaceful. I have people taking care of the cats and they say they've been doing fine. This morning I went for a long walk around Sapporo. I never really plan my vacations. It's a vacay. It's a vacay. It's a vacay. I like to wander a lot and see what I find. Oh, I'm re I need to be better at doing that. I oh. never find anything. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm I wonder about. I'm lost. too controlling to to let myself just. I need to. You can't free walk, Susie. I know, no, but I I have to. I have got better at it, but there is still a little fucking alarm in the back of my head that goes, just look up the best place. Look it up. Well, why? Look what what do you mean? Is so? What would you do otherwise? So if I had my way, I would pre-plan like the best cafe, the best bar, the best oh, right, park, okay. like activity. Like I'm just I need to fucking. Relax. Yeah, but everybody wants someone like that to do that for the group. Yeah, I'm happy to take that role. Because I would never. Yeah, and I would clash quite I'd badly be like, no, with someone you. who was like, "Oh, I've got an itinerary." I'd be like, yeah. "I'd be like, you sort it out. Wake me up yeah. when it's time to go." <laughs> okay, um, I like to wander around and see what I find. I came across this statue in a park. I couldn't find out any real information about it online, but it was weird and pretty, and it's like a bunch of bodies climbing over each other on a spire. Yeah, it sounds really pretty. Mm, gorgeous. A I was gang taking... bang. <laughs> it's a big long tower bang gang. Bang gang. A gang bang. <laughs> I was taking a bang gang. <laughs> bang gang. Jesus Christ. <laughs> It means the same thing, I guess. I was taking pictures of it from different angles since it's cylindrical. I moved around once to one side and almost dropped my phone at what I saw. It felt too similar to be a coincidence. I felt dizzy staring up at it. Uh, up at it. This kid with a dented head. Oh, he's seen Nugget Boy. Nugget Boy's back. Nugget no. Boy's in Japan. Yeah, Nugget Boy's on the move. I'd love a nugget. No. <laughs> I know, you've said tikka masala, that's what I want. Oh my god! Have you ever tried a chicken tikka masala, but with nuggets? I was in just it? thinking that. Literally, we should coin I was that. just thinking. I bet that's incredible. <laughs> I bet that's amazing. What else would you <laughs> need? Okay, so he's seen Nugget Fuck. Boy, right? It, he's seen like statue Nugget Boy. I don't know. Maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe it's nothing. It doesn't feel like nothing. Anyway, I have to pack for my flight home in the morning. It'll be good to see the cats again. I made it home. These cats. The cats are fine. If a little more talkative than usual. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Weird things have been happening with the electricity in my par apartment this week. First, two bulbs have burnt out in the hallway in less than a week. At this point, I've just left it alone rather than get a ladder again. But my ball burnt out the other day, actually. Your ball? My ball. Ball, ball, ball. <laughs> Your ball bag. My ball, but I put it in two minutes later. Oh, really? Do you mm. think that's ghosts or just a bad bulb? Yes, ghosts. Ghosts, great. Paid £2.50, so I hope it's not a bad bulb. <laughs> bad bulb. Oh my God, he's such a bad bulb. <laughs> uh, the strangest thing has to do with the backlight on my TV. It's an LED strip that plugs into the TV itself via USB. The TV has to be on in order for the backlight to be on. But last night, the backlight was flickering on and off by itself. I noticed it just in time before dawn when I woke up and went into the kitchen to get some water. I'd barely gotten back into bed again when I saw a faint light come on in the living room. After a few seconds, it went dark again. I went back into the living room and stood there watching the backlight go on and off, on and off for at least a few minutes. It was bizarre. Eventually it stopped and now the backlight doesn't work at all. It's only a couple of months old, so it shouldn't be dead already. 
Anyway, I couldn't get back to sleep, so I went to the diner near my apartment. It was the only thing open at 4 a.m. Bodega. Um, wow. Sorry, I don't know. We, is it a bodega or is it a diner? It's a diner. I really He's taken a photo a of his food and it actually looks quite good. He said, what is had, it? I had eggs over easy with ham, but uh, it was too much ham, but the eggs were pretty good. Show but then me. there's like a, a potato hash on the side of it. That's fine. Yeah, I would. I would. I you? Would. Is that your vibe? Yeah, I fucking would. I just want some nuggets and a ticket, chicken tikka masala mm-hmm. sauce now. When I got back home, the sun was starting to come up, so I figured I might as well shower and go into work early. I showered and brushed my teeth and headed into the bedroom to get dressed. As I passed the front door, I thought I heard a faint scratching sound uh, from the other side. It's that it, nugget bastard. Yeah, it was so soft. I wasn't sure it really happened. I went over to the door, but I was too scared to look through the peephole. I couldn't bring myself to actually put my face that close to the sound, so I opted to take a photo instead. Since there's a, uh, since there's a skylight just outside my door, the hall was awash in a faint yellow-green light. I snapped a couple of photos. At first, the pictures didn't seem like anything, just blurry nothingness. But I analysed it and started noticing things. Part of a face... An ear and an eye staring oh, right no, thank back at me. You bitch. <laughs> I think maybe it's time to get someone else involved. It's obvious this isn't going to stop until I do something. I'm just not sure what that is yet. I'll let you all know when I figure it out. For those who couldn't make it out, and then he's I just don't understand why you'd stay. Well, if it's your flat and it's your I feel home. like I think I'm going to get murdered. Can I go and stay on your sofa? Do you actually think you'd be like that if it was a paranormal entity? If I thought it was definitely a ghost. You'd move out. I've just hang up. Were well, you about to throw up onto the mic? That's little, lovely. Little, a tiny bit. Gorgina. I would 100%. If I saw all this stuff and it was real, I'd be like, I'm not, of course I'm not staying here. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe he's just spinning us a fucking yarn. I think he is. Mm. I was going to say this. I think dear David's a little shit. What do you think? Do you think yeah. Nugget Boy doesn't exist? I don't believe Apart it. from in our ticker dreams. Well, because he's like, gosh, what, brush my teeth. It's all the fucking Nugget Boy again. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> it's not just make friends normal. with him. Poor, poor little David. He no, just I'd wants be to be friends. Uh, anyway, It'd sorry for the radio silence for the past couple of weeks. First, I had a friend come over to do some cleansing stuff. She did the whole apartment in the hallway. A lot of self-proclaimed professional mediums have reached out, plus a, about a dozen ghost hunter TV shows. I've declined them all because I don't really want strangers in my house sensationalising what's going on. So instead, I had a friend come over and cleanse the place. And for about a week or so... It felt like it worked. Things appeared to go back to normal. The cats weren't gathering at the door anymore. I stopped having dreams. It was starting to seem like it was over. Then one morning last week, I was walking to work and past the shuttered warehouse as usual. This time, all the metal door, all the metal door were wide open. (laughs) Oh no, it sounds spooky. All the metal doors, I guess, were wide open, sunlight pouring in. The warehouse was still mostly empty, except for one thing. There was a hearse parked near the back wall. The warehouse had been closed now for over two months. I have no idea why it was open that day. Nobody was around. It was weird, but I tried not to think about it. It's not all that strange to see a hearse, I guess, like they have to park somewhere. I tried to put it out of my mind, and the next several days were uneventful. But something else happened last night. It was around 11 or so, and I was watching TV on the couch. I went into the dining room to get a drink from the fridge, and I noticed both the cats sitting by the far window staring up at it. The window looks out onto the roof of the business next door. I glanced out the window but didn't see anything. I figured that maybe there was a mouse in the wall or something. I shrugged and grabbed a beer from the fridge. As I went into the kitchen to get a bottle opener, I noticed something. Oh God. There's a window in the kitchen which looks out onto the same roof. Not get ahead. And someone was standing on the roof. Not get ahead. Staring at me. Not get ahead. <laughs> I immediately ducked down. I reached up and flicked off the light switch. I peered over the window, but I couldn't see much. My phone was in my pocket, so I grabbed it and took a photo. It was blurry and dark, but I swear someone was out there. I tried to take a better photo, but the figure had disappeared. I I don't know what I was going to (laughs) say. Your brain is going... I was going to say, how fortuitous. Ah, that word, yeah. Yeah. I closed all the blinds and made sure the door was locked and then drank like five more beers until I was too drunk wow. to be scared. To be fair, um, 
if you've had a few drinks and you're scared about, like, I remember this in Edinburgh last year, and I stayed in Get that, like, pissed. yeah, when you're pissed and you're a bit like, oh, do you know what? I just need to brush my teeth, yeah, and that actually, off and just flop into bed. I don't care not. if anyone murders me. Yeah, you're a bit more. I'm not asked. You're a bit more loose. I haven't got the energy to run away. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. fine. Um, I closed all the blinds, made sure the door was locked, and then drank like five more beers until I was too drunk to be scared. But now I feel like I'm back at square one. I'm sure it was him. He's not going away, and I don't know what to do. Then there's a massive gap. It's been about four months since I... Uh, no, it's been four months since the first time I dreamt of David. This might be long, but stick with me. Last night, I dreamt about him again. It was almost the exact same dream that I had the first time I saw him. In no. my dream, I saw him in a chair again. I don't have the green chair in my room anymore. This time, it was a recliner I've had for years. He was staring right at me, just like the first time. Again, I felt paralyzed and I could barely move, but this time, something was different. I still felt mostly immobile, but I could squirm just a little bit. I felt more alert. I could move my hands somewhat. David glared at me, and I dreaded what I knew was coming. He was going to get out of the chair and come towards me like before. I had to do something. I keep my phone next to me on my bed and somehow I managed to get a hold of it. I thought, if David's going to kill me, maybe I can at least get evidence on my phone. I started snapping pictures in the dark. Sure enough, he crawled oh, down no. off the chair and began shuffling <laughs> towards <Jesus>. me. <laughs> Her headphones have just come straight off. Boom. He moved. Oh, I hate that. He moved slowly, like it was a struggle for him. I felt terrified, but I kept taking photos. David limped closer towards me, never taking his eyes off me. Soon, I was face to face with him. He started muttering something, too quiet for me to understand. Oh. I watched as his eyes rolled back in his head until they were all white. I tried to writhe away for him, oh. but I could barely move. I stared in horror as he began crawling up onto my bed. No, vile. Still murmuring something. No. No. That's when I woke up. Same as before. Broad daylight. No trace of David anywhere. He's having dreams. It's a bad nightmare. Yeah. It's almost routine now, but it was a dream after. I think what's going to happen now is he's going to look at his phone and he's going to have the photos. But let's see. Oh, I, just, um, I hate this man. <laughs> Adam. Um, not your Adam, Adam Ellis, who wrote this. Uh, oh. It's almost routine now, but it was a dream after all. So I got up and went to work. And after a while, the stress of the dream melted away. I wasn't even going to write about this since it wouldn't really be new information. But tonight, I noticed something that petrified me. I went to my phone to find a picture from a couple of days ago. Mm, and I saw dozens of pitch black photos in my camera roll all from last night. But did they have the nugget in? I'm about to look at this. It's better just to show you turn oh. up your brightness. Oh, fuck. Let me show me. Show me, show me, show me, show me. I don't want to see. I don't want to see. Show me. Oh, you haven't looked yet? Oh, fuck. I bet it's just a black screen. Usually I can come up with some excuse for what's happening, but I have no logical explanation for this. Have you seen it? Oh. I don't understand what I'm looking at, Hannah. Maybe from far away. Turn it round. Is that someone peeking over the, bo the bottom of the bed? I can't wake up There's a little is. head poking up at the bottom of the bed. Is there? <gasps> oh, I don't like it. I don't fucking like it's it. It's there. Yeah, that's what I saw. But I don't want to look too close because I feel disgusting. I couldn't see it. So now I'm sitting here on my couch freaking out. I certainly won't be able to sleep. I just felt like I needed to get this out. For everyone asking, yes, I'm alive. I've been on the quiet side because there's something I'm trying to investigate and I'm not sure how to yet. I'd rather not tweet unless I have something substantial to share. It's also sort of hard to explain the, the, the logistics the logistics of what I'm trying to find out, but I'll do my best. Basically, there's a part of my apartment I'm just now learning about. At least that's what I think. To refresh your memory, I live in a duplex. I used to live on the first floor, and now I live on the second floor. It's all about him, isn't it? It's a long, boxy building that looks like this. He's done a sketch, who cares? The other week, I was tweeting the most recent update from the living room couch. About 30 seconds after I'd sent the last tweet, I heard a thump directly above my head, oh my as if someone above me had dropped something on the floor, which is impossible since I'm in the top apartment. Although mm. that could be pigeons. Honestly, I was terrorised by the rats and pigeons You were, of you Caledonian thought you had a ghost road. and it was a rat. Yeah, it was a fucking rat. Yeah. A rata. Um, you do take the rats everywhere, don't you? I know, I'm like the Pied Piper. You've had a rat, you've had a rat <laughs> in the kitchen, what oh my God. You've had a rat. You've had a rat. You've had a rat there, and then you've had a rat in York, and you, and you also had a mouse oh, in yeah. the farm shop. 
Susie's like the fucking Piper. She's like the... I'm Pied Piper. Jesus. I'm the Pied Piper. What is it? The Pied Piper of Hamlin? I don't know. Pied Piper of Ealing. Um, I don't care. Great. <laughs> don't know, I uh, don't care. Don't know, I don't care. Okay. Uh, there's also no way to access the route. I'll, I'll, I'll close off this part three in a sec and we can move on to another okay. story. Um, so he's heard a thump. There's no way to access the roof. There aren't any ladders on the outside of the building. The only way you get onto the roof is through a skylight in the hallway. There are no trees in the immediate vicinity either. It definitely wasn't pipes. It was distinctly the sound of something falling to the floor. My building's old and makes lots of noises, but this was a new sound and it startled me. So I'm thinking, is there some secret crawl space in my home? Yeah. And if that, honestly, that actually freaks me out, the idea that someone is just waiting in a crawl space. Oh, have you ever seen that programme where he's living in the walls? Yes. Oh, my. Honestly, it's God. my, like, it's my idea of fucking hell. It's horrible. And those people that just live in people's attics. Yeah. I know. What's it? It's called something, isn't it? It will be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we aren't going to be able to answer be. that today. But I'll just fucking look for it on Netflix. Um, so I'm thinking, is there some secret crawl space in my home? I look all over my apartment, but I can't figure it out. So I go out into the hallway, and that's when something dawns on me. There's no real way to ease into this, so I'll just say it. There's a mysterious hatch in my hallway. I've always known about it, but I just assumed it opened directly to the roof. Well, assume makes an ass out of you and me. Thank you, Hannah. That's really good to impact. Um... <laughs> I am so off the wall, it's unbelievable. I, I, I wonder what it's like to be in your head right now. Oh, don't, don't. Is it hell? It's bad. Yeah. It's bad, yeah. It's bad. I'm only in bed for three days. Okay. Um, so the hatch. It's really high above the stairs, so I always figured it was impossible to access without some sort of fancy professional ladder. I see that hatch every morning when I leave for work and think nothing of it, but this time something dawned on me. It can't lead to the roof because it's actually below the roof. I'm about, I'm about to spring some simple math on you, so I apologise in advance. Oh, no. I don't want... No, to be honest, I don't think any of us are ready for this. Uh. He's done some math. He's done some drawings. Um, <clears throat> he thinks it might be some sort of insulated space that all the residential buildings have. I'm not an art architect, so what do I know? It didn't seem relevant... Oh, why can't I speak today? Relevante. <laughs> Relevante. It didn't seem relevant enough at the time, so I decided I wasn't going to mention it here. But over the past week and a half, I've been hearing more things above me. Raccoon. Raccoon! It's, it's an animal. It's definitely an animal. Oh, make it a pet to join your kitties. A few days after the first sound, I heard a similar thump while I was in the kitchen. And then last night, I heard something small that? clink to the floor and roll about six feet before stopping. Something's going on up there. Maybe it's a raccoon, he says. Ah! See, oh I got there way gosh. before you, Adam. Jesus. But maybe it's not. I also can't get over the fact that the hatch is in such a weird, inaccessible place over the stairs. I need to investigate. I'm just not sure how right now. And I'm going to leave it there. So what? He's worried <clears> now <throat> that people are coming in through the hatch or ghosts are. Or something weird is happening as well as the ghosts. Um... As well as Nugget Man. Uh, yeah, well, I think he's maybe being like, what if the dreams I'm having of Nugget Boy are actually some? It's someone. I, no, I disagree. I just don't think they are. I th what was that on that photo? Was was it Nugget Boy in that photo? I don't think so. It was just a little outline. And he, he's ended by saying, I guess I'll have to buy a long pole off Amazon to see if the hatch moves, buy a ladder. At any rate, that's why I've been MIA. I'll keep you posted when I figure out how to get up there. Oh, I'm very excited about hearing So, four. Hatch. Hatch and Nugget Boy. That's how we're going to end on part three. Gorgeous. This long, winded nugget tale. Would you like to have a little story? Yes, please. I'd like to caveat this with the fact that I can't remember choosing these because I was very drunk. Okay. So this one's called I Try to Fuck a Ghost. <laughs> Oh, she get this? Did you write it? No. <laughs> okay. I wish. Okay. Hi. First, a little backstory. My girlfriend had just dumped me, and naturally, I was feeling rather upset. I rewatched both Legally Blonde movies, appropriate, and ate approximately two tubs of icing. Icing, not ice cream. Wow. Icing. But I was still down. One night at around 11, I heard my dog barking out of the window. I came into the living room and looked out with him, only to see nothing. The end. <laughs> the end. Thank That's you. it. Great. There was nothing outside. No cars, no animals, no people. But he seemed more distressed than usual. His fur was standing straight up and his bark turned more into a whine. 
Then, completely unprompted, he started jumping and turning his head to look out the window at a more extreme angle. He was clearly following something and after a few seconds of turning, he jumped up and sprinted towards the back door. A back door is made entirely out of glass and he ran into it. <laughs> oh. oh, sad. I've done that before. What, run at a glass window? Run at a glass window, yeah. Why have you done that? Um, because I thought it was open. <laughs> Why did you run at it? I was, I was like, I was, well, I wasn't running, but I was like, come on, let's go. And I was like, doof, straight into the fucking glass window. <laughs> um, I'm surprised I haven't done that wow, today because I'm like absolutely hung <laughs> over. Um, our back door is made entirely out of glass and he ran to uh, Sorry, he ran to it, not ran into it. Okay. He ran to it and started aggressively barking at it and jumping up on his hind legs. I've had this dog for three years and I knew that this is how he barks when the mailman or any other person he doesn't know by. Mm. I think I'm justified in saying I was kind of unsettled by it, especially when he began running rapidly between the two windows. Dogs don't randomly start barking if there isn't something to feel threatened by. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Dogs see ghosts. They do, 100%. By this point, my mum had come out of her room to see what was going on and we looked out the front window. After a few minutes of looking, we see the motion-activated lights go on. My first response is, fuck, there's someone trying to get into the house. So I start locking all the doors and windows while my mum checks the security cameras. Nothing. There was nobody at our house, no animals, no people, no intruders, or at least none that the cameras picked up. My mum and I, being spiritual people, immediately assume it's a ghost. She is unsettled by this and starts to go and grab the holy water, but I tell her not to worry. I've just got holy water, like, ready to go. Yeah, maybe they've just got vats of it in the what, fridge. What happens to holy water? Do you have to, like... You've got to bless it, innit? Is it? <laughs> I'm not religious and I've never been to church, so I have no idea. Bless it, innit? Bless um, it, innit? I tell her not to worry that it was probably a bat or something that the crew threw across the cameras. I don't know much about ghosts, but at that point, my weird mix of sadness and sexual frustration... <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, preach, sister. Had me wanting to let whatever was outside into our house. Oh, God. I always wanted a haunted house story, and I'd heard stories of people having sex with ghosts, so I thought I'd give it a try. Jesus Christ, it's gone from zero to 100. It's so aggressive. I admit, I probably look batshit crazy, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yelling into the night, something along the lines of, come in, guys, it's warm in here. We won't kick you out. Oh, wow. There's room at the fucking inn. I feel like the ghosts need Angela. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. They're like, sorry, I'm feeling uncomfortable. Oh, I now. don't really want to, thank you. I I just, this is very inappropriate. I literally just wanted to haunt your house. Yeah, and now you're making it sexy, which is weird. <laughs> but long story short, I now had a ghost <laughs> in my house. Mm -hmm. The first hint that was whatever, the first hint that whatever was outside had come inside was my dog. Immediately after the night, that night, he got fidgety and restless and began barking a lot more than usual. The second hint was my door. I'm in my bed trying to sleep when my door violently flings open. A draft would not have gotten it to open with such intensity. The sound of the door hitting my wall was so loud that it woke up my dad. He promptly asked, what the fuck is going on in there? Oh. Wait, he, so this, this, she's living with her parents and she's or trying hey, to... Or we don't know. So, okay, but trying to get in the spirits for a shag. Trying to shag the spirits. Oh, God, come it, on. While your parents are in the next room. It's nothing sacred. Nothing is sacred. Nothing is sacred. No. I think my hand just went like... <laughs> okay. Oh, what the fuck is going on in there? I didn't know how to answer him. I wasn't the one who opened the door. The next morning, he asked me about it, and I just told him that I must have been sleepwalking or something. This continued every single day for about two weeks. That was so intense. I knew enough was enough when the hinges on my door began to come apart, causing it to tilt and drag on my floor, scratching it. This pissed off my parents even more, and I, too, was just getting annoyed by being woken up in the middle of every night. So I, like any sensible human being, decided to make the best out of a shitty situation. I was going to fuck the ghost. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I don't think this is my best Honestly. Choice. Firstly, I felt that it was rude to fuck somebody I did not know. Yeah. So I gave the energy a name. Karen. <laughs> I tried talking to Karen through my tarot cards. <sighs> And then through my pendulum and then through mirrors. Because to be fair, we have tried every single one of those things. Yeah, but we're not not with the aim of getting a I don't, LA. No. Yeah. For any ghosts in the room, I do not consent. No, I don't. We don't want that. We just want to say hello. No hand stuff, please. Hello, hello. Um, I tried talking to Karen through my tarot cards and then through my I'm pendulum. I'm kind of the same colour as the background, aren't I? Look. 
Sorry. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just, uh, my colours on my um, jumper are uh, mirroring what's behind oh, me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because this is my new cider jumper. Hashtag cider. Hashtag cider. Um, <laughs> those conversations didn't really go anywhere, so I decided to do it the old-fashioned way. That night, like every night, I heard my door slam open. I immediately took off all of my clothes and removed my covers. Did I look crazy? Yes. Did I care? No, not really. Um, <laughs> for a little bit of context, I take sleeping pills regularly to help me fall asleep. It shows. And at this point, they just started kicking in. My words were slightly slow, but I turned to the doorway, running my hand along my torso. I told whatever was there, hey, Karen, wanna like? Fuck. <laughs> Fucking hell. This is making me so uncomfortable. This is such this is like I didn't, awful erotic. I fiction. did not read this before. I decided to do I just saw the title and I was like, yeah, alright. Because I'm down if you're down. The door just stayed open, so I continued. Oh, come on, Karen. You must be lonely out there, being a spirit and all. Don't be scared. I won't hurt you. Says the person that's definitely gonna hurt you. Yeah, and also when someone says that, you're like, I think you might. I watched the door intently and for the first time ever it began to creep close. It continued and eventually shut. I was terrified, but also really let down. If you think being rejected by a human person is hard, imagine being rejected by a ghost. Well, that is quite sad, isn't it? To be yeah. rejected by, to be Ka ghosted by ghosts. Yeah, and Karen's like, I just no. You've gone about this all the wrong way. I don't know who it is that's written that, but it's made me very uncomfortable. Yeah, and they're about to pass out on sleeping pills, and I'm like, mm, no, listen, it's all weird, wrong. It? It's all wrong. Bit weird. Bit off. Um, don't shag ghosts. It's not, it's not good. <laughs> just everyone, put your dick in your pants and put it away Please, and hide it God and just sake. go in a bin. It probably wasn't the best choice considering your situation. Well, exactly. Really I just want every, <clears throat> um, you know, every willy. Every cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> Does it? Okay, you've it's lost your there. fucking I mind. I have lost my mind. Um, would you like a story? Yeah, right. Okay, I've just looked at my um, security cam to look at Rocco and he's not there. Where else would he be? I think he's hidden behind a chair that I can't see. Do you want to give the listeners some context? Yeah, I'm looking after the dog and I've got a little cam. be scary if I saw something creepy <gasps> on him. Could you fucking Ooh. imagine? I actually could not look at that. I know. Because well, if you, do you imagine if you just saw a figure there like this? I know, but do you know what? The The... The want to know he's okay completely trumps all of that. Oh, it's like a mother's instinct. It is. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I just want to know he's okay. Oh, but he's not there. Well, he's not there. I think he's hiding. My, when I left, I think he stayed lying down. Can you not him. talk through the through the cam? Well, I don't want to because I think that make him feel a bit like discombobulated because oh, he'll be like, "Where is she? She's here," and then I'm not there. That's sad. Actually. So anyway, I'll I'll hurry off and give him a big hug when I'm back. Okay, so um, this is. A story for you, please. Hit me. Hit me. All right, Hannah. This one's creepy. Is it? Yeah. I'm so excited. Settle in. I'm ready. I'm so ready. My wife is lurking in my childhood photos. For fuck's sake. But I met her at the age of 30. Oh, I've heard this before. It's like when people are like in the background of other people's photos. It's weird. Yeah. My wife is lurking in my childhood photos, but I'm, I met her at the age of 30, and she looks no younger in the old pictures. Sometimes I feel as if my life has been nothing but an ever-evolving door of grief. I'm only 34 years old, and I've lost everyone to death, rejection, or diverging paths. My parents, my sister, my childhood friends, and countless other loved ones, I feel numb, directionless, and above all else, I feel angry. I hate the world for taking them from me. I hate life for dealing cards from a rotten deck. My mother passed last year. She'd been fighting a lengthy battle with dementia since 2019. I didn't cry when she died. I had nothing left in the tank. I'd already endured small, painful pinches of grief over the years. I grieved whenever she lost a piece of herself. I grieved for every one of us that she forgot, whilst there were still those of us left to forget. Those four years fragmented me. Mum and I were so close, and it broke my heart to see her very soul disintegrate. She was my only remaining family. My dad and my sister died when I was young, and slowly everyone else vanished too. I can't explain it, but in despite of her deterioration, I think mum held on to life for me. I worry, Brennan, my mother hazily said. You're safe, mum, I said. You don't need to... No, I worry about Brennan. Brennan sounds like a cereal. Brennan. Oh, Brennan. 
No, I worry about Brennan, she interjected in a fluster. I'm Brennan, Mum, and I'm fine, I said, sighing. But I worry, she absentmindedly whispered. When my mother died in February 2023, I was left with one person in the entire world, Olivia. I counted my blessings to have a darling wife who would always be by my side, until I realised how terribly true that might be. Whilst I was clearing out my mother's attic, I found a box of photo albums, dust-coated antiques that I'd never seen before. Too many painful memories, perhaps, but a tinge of warmth spread through my body as I eagerly flicked through the pages. A fuzzy, forgotten feeling. I remember being happy as a child. I was surrounded by family and friends. I lovingly tore through the pages and I was moments away from shouting for my wife to come up to the attic, but then I noticed something bizarre. Olivia was standing in the back of a photo. It was a picture of a day at the zoo with my parents and my sister. Through metal bars at the opposite side of the line enclosure, I could see my wife standing there. Pedophile. <laughs> Someone I didn't know as a child, but it was her. There was no doubt about that. Distinctive black hair, fair complexion and petite physique. She wore a thin, knowing smile that seemed unbefitting of her or any like version that. of Olivia. <laughs> Was that a thin smile? <laughs> that looks like you're about to evacuate your bowels. <laughs> well, weirdly, you should say that. Um... <laughs> what, that you've just smile? done that, have you? I've just, just done it now. I, yeah, which is terrifying. Is that knowing? <laughs> <laughs> Again, it looks constipation it's slash diarrhea. It's not a great description, no. I don't think. <laughs> um, my stomach gurgled nervously, but I smiled and oh, laughed someone it else off. is about to evacuate the bell. Why <laughs> um, always shit talk? Oh, you know, we, we must Toilet talk is We constant. don't want to do toilet talk on this no, podcast. We are. It's uncouth. It's uncouth, it's uncanny, it's unceremonial. Eh, fuck off. Okay. Honestly, I talk absolute garbage. My stomach. I've got, I have got an itchy boob. Sometimes that happens. Is that okay? It's okay, yeah. Yeah, you just pat it. Okay, I feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Help. No, please, you have to st stop. Okay. Hannah, you, are you done now? Better. <laughs> no, please. I don't know this is bad. I'm sorry, I'm hungover, and it's just. It's like you've actually lost your mind, and you've I become I have. four years I old. I don't know why you won't believe me. I told you, <laughs> copious amounts of time. I have lost my fucking mind. Okay. My stomach gurgled nervously, but I smiled and laughed it off. Hmm. Uncanny. I whispered to myself. I said that, didn't I? That's fucking weird. That's uncanny. That is uncanny. It's uncanny that I said uncanny when it's he like said inception. uncanny. I can't work <clears> it out. <laughs> Sorry, I've got such an itchy boob, why? Okay, anyone watching the podcast, don't. <laughs> oh. Switch back to just listening. Just listen. No just listen. Audio, please. Don't do not ch stop it now. I'm sorry. Just I've relax. Got a just really fucking itchy get a grip tits. on yourself. Got it, she says. Get a grip. <laughs> Obviously it couldn't have been her, I told myself, with the same age. And she wouldn't she would have been a child at the time. It's just she a did. doppelganger. <laughs> it's just a doppelganger. I carried on flicking through the pages and then a lump formed at the surface of my throat. My wife appeared again. This time it was a photo of our family's Christmas gathering in a restaurant. Mm. And outside the window, beneath a smoking shelter, a solitary figure stood and watched us. So is she in it twice then? Yeah. Oh. He's finding more pictures where she's like... Do a thin lip smile. <laughs> You've got one tooth out, which is hilarious. Mm. Um, it was Olivia. Or a woman who, yet again, looked identical to my 33-year-old wife. Once is nothing, twice is a coincidence, I muttered uncertainly. I frantically tore through the photo album as sweat collected in thick icy trails on my colourless cheeks. Olivia was in every photo and she looked no different from the present day. The same woman, always lurking somewhere in the background, discreetly watching, ever wearing that foul grin. My heart thumped fitfully. This was no longer an oddity, a funny pecu peculiarity. It was an unsettling... Mm. It, right. it was unsettling enough to see evidence of a person stalking my family, but a person who hadn't aged in 33 years? 
It was sinister. It defied everything my logical brain knew to be true. I found myself trembling in terror and clawing at my hair. I'd stopped turning pages. After seeing my wife skulking in dozens of pictures, I hadn't the stomach to continue, but I couldn't tear my eyes off the page before me. It was a photo captioned, Yummy cake, Brennan's 10th birthday party. I was sitting. Well, and his 33-year-old's wife is in at his 10-year-old birthday party. Wow. Suppose. I was sitting in the back garden on an overcast day. A decadent chocolate cake sat on my lap. My jubilant friends and family surrounded me. I was midway through blowing out ten candles and the flames leant away from my pursed lips. There she was again. Hiding in a photo from the... Hiding in a photo from the year 2000. Olivia would have been ten years old, just like me. And yet the camera told another tale. This time, my fully grown wife cowered behind the short fence at the rear of our property. But the top of her head peered. Oh, it's like Lynn all over again. It's fucking Lynn. But the top of her head peered into our garden and I could distinguish her distinctive black hair. No, thank you, madam. Her eyes were bloodshot and thirsty. She was perhaps most hauntingly eyeing the camera. It felt as if she could see me in the attic. You're losing your mind, Brennan, I thought. Eyes still unable to look away. This isn't real. It's all in your... What? A sudden wisp of wind. Oh, my God, fuck extinguished the attic light. My body shivered uncontrollably and I found myself wrestling with an undeniable thought. It sounds like lips blowing air. Uh, <sighs> Foley. Trying to steady my breathing, I anxiously patted the floor of my blackened attic. I wish I wouldn't leave my phone in stupid places, I thought. I wanted to leave, but I didn't trust myself to manoeuvre through my mother's cluttered attic in the dark. And then... My fingers brushed over a familiar smooth surface. Gotcha, I thought before picking up my phone and turning on the flashlight. I screamed. What has happened? The birthday photo had changed. The candles on my cake were gone and I was sitting all alone. No family, no friends, nobody, not even Olivia. I stumbled to my feet and dropped the book. The floorboards moaned as I shift my weight backwards. I had to get far from that cursed book, that cursed attic. I twisted to run for the attic door, but I didn't move beyond that first step. My torch, it lit something horrifying. Poking her head... Oh, bleh, bleh. Poking her head through the attic opening, Olivia smiled at me. Oh, why are all these bitches cray? <laughs> her eyes mirrored those in the numerous photographs I'd seen. Her pupils seemed darker, wider. Oh, no, Red veins painted the corners. And her eyes rippled ever so slightly as if they were not really eyes at all. Bye, Olivia. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the woman I married, but that wasn't who eyed me from the attic door. She was a horror, some rabid mouse that had soundlessly slithered up the stairs and the ladder. Oh. My wife giggled. <laughs> I'll eat you from the inside out. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I mean, how? And then, how are you getting in? <laughs> and then the woman plummeted through the attic door, disappearing from sight. Thinking only of escaping, I lunged for the open door, but something seized my ankle. Do you think she'd go arsehole then? What do you mean? Well, she's just going to eat, eat him from the inside out. Oh, I hope not. That would be an awful way to enter. Well, yeah, it was. Mm. But, well, some people would. <laughs> well, to, to, okay. To eat your guts, <laughs> let's if, not do yeah, that. Yeah, no. Oh, gross. <laughs> but something seized my ankle, chaining me to the attic. I spun to face my shackle and my mouth parted in wordless terror. From the open page of the photo album, Olivia's twisted arm and face had emerged. Uh. She offered a toothy grin and unhinged eyes as she attempted to pull me into the picture. Vile. Uh. <laughs> He's put here vile, bile, so rich, and with our consummation it comes complete. Vile, bile. Vile, but I think she's chanting. Vile, bile, so rich, and with our consummation it becomes complete. I cried I in agony. Have sex. Mm, I think they're eating him. Oh. Yeah. I cried, in agony, ag bleh, I cried in agony as I was dragged to hell by the thing that I had loved for three years. A hellish demon I had believed to be my wife, but it seemed I truly had nobody left. Nothing but a cancerous tumour clinging to my very mm. essence. It was draining the last of my pain, the last of my suffering. I closed my eyes and thought of my loved ones. The loved ones I was certain I would shortly see again. As the terrifying demonic limb pulled my legs... Lynn? 
Might as well say that, right? Uh, demonic limb pulled my leg into the photo album I prepared to meet whatever fate awaited. All of that anger, the years spent in perpetual psychological nightmares for nothing. I visualised my mother's smiling face and a calmness swept through my mind. I worry about Brennan, she said. I'm fu I started to fib before deciding to unburden the weight on my chest. No, I'm not fine, Mum, but I will be. Suddenly, the hissing ceased. All sound ceased, and when I opened my eyes, my wretched wife was gone. My ankle was no longer merging with the laminated plastic, but it throbbed painfully. The bottom of my trouser leg bore claw-shaped tears. Tears, tears. Tears. The bottom of my trouser... <laughs> my trousers. My trouser leg. So she's still alive, she's there. Well, this demon's gone. Oh. The bottom of my trouser leg bore claw-shaped tears and it was stained with fresh blood. To be certain the entity had vanished, I cast my phone onto the book and the picture of my 10th birthday had returned to normal. I wasn't alone. I was surrounded by my friends and family. Nothing could destroy that memory in my mind. But I shuddered as I turned the pages of the book. My smiling wife was still lurking in the photographs. I fled the house and I haven't looked back. It's been a year and I don't fear the memories anymore. I'm moving forwards, I'm learning to love again. I'm leaning to open myself to new people and new memories, but I still fear loss. After all, that horrifying woman waits for me. I know she does. I fear the day that I notice her in a new photo. Hang on, so has he left her? He's fucked off, yeah. Oh, classic. He's left Livia. Classic. Yeah, cheers, mate. Also, that sounds good to her. Don't I? I just keep seeing ghosts in my pictures. Gotta leave, girl. Yeah, I, I would. I wouldn't have mind. <laughs> you are hanging out your ass. I am um, so <laughs> hungry. Roast. Um, I feel like he's done the right thing, though. I mean, I know it's been a man-hating day, but I do feel like that was his right yeah, to get maybe. the fuck out of there, because oh, Olivia's sure, clearly fine. a demon and has been all his life. So, oh right, okay, fine. So Olivia, it's. I thought there was two of them. Well, I thought that as well, but I actually think that maybe his wife, Olivia, has been the reason for all his misfortune. Yeah, she's a mad bitch. I think he's, uh, she's killed off all his family, she's maybe. She's crazed. Yeah, she's oh, crazed. She's crazed, dead and demonic. Hannah, would you like another story? Yes, please. Okay, for your hungover brain. Um, Honestly, mm. what an unprofessional witch I am. Have you heard of this app called Are You Being Followed? <laughs> I've always been afraid of being attacked on the street at night. Despite years of working in a bar and coming home late around midnight, this fear had never left me. The pay was lousy and the boss forbade employees to park their cars in the parking lot reserved for customers. So every what night... A what Are a you kidding me? Honestly. We can't even get to work. Yeah. Ugh. And probably a man. It's probably a man. And it's probably a woman. So Sorry, hashtag not all men. Fucking man. Honestly, I'm hating on them today. Mm, I'm raging. I'm not really in the mood for them, I'll be honest. Um, so every night I had to walk alone for several minutes to my car parked a little further away one day as I was talking to one of my friends she told me about this, this app don't you know this app it's called Are You Being Followed or AYBF for short basically the app detects the waves of nearby cell phones and if the algorithm notices that a signal is following oh. you the app sends you a notification she that's explained. pretty good I mean, just if people are taking your route home, I'd be like, what the fuck are you yeah, doing? That is annoying. It's like, ping, 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 ping. Yeah. Also, psychopaths don't always carry mobiles. And I, yeah, I'd just be convinced that everyone's Also, if you are me. trying to commit a crime, everyone says, leave your phone at home. Yeah. So actually, this app is, it has shortcomings. Yeah. yeah. Um, some say it also detects ghosts and supernatural creatures that gives, Ooh. and it gives us particular waves, but I think that's bullshit to attract views on TikTok, she added. I couldn't quite figure out how it worked, but she assured me that the algorithm was never wrong and that it already allowed her once to be alerted early enough to be safe from a strange guy one night. I downloaded it, figuring it couldn't hurt. Mm. One evening, as I was walking down the street, clutching my coat, I felt my phone vibrate. Mm? My phone vibrate. <laughs> I felt my phone vibrate in my pocket. It was the app that had sent me a notification. And on the screen, it simply appeared the message, you are being followed. I hate that. That's hard. They could have thought of a better way yeah. to put that message on. Like, yeah. maybe look behind, not, you are being followed. That's yeah. so aggressive. You are about to die. Yeah. Uh, you are being followed. Could you be someone walking home? Well, and this is it. Yourself. I know, I know. And that's happened quite a few times when, you know, when guys don't really have the, like, um, self-awareness to, like, leave a gap. And they're yeah. getting quite close behind. And you're like, what? 
like cross the road. It is dickhead. annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very annoying. Oh god, it's just I a just... lot of anger about them. Um, <clears throat> you are being followed. I slowed down and looked around. The street was deserted. The wind sounding in my ears. Perplexed, I continued walking. The sound of my solitary footsteps echoing around me. <laughs> I can't do it. A minute later, I received another notification. You are being followed. With no one behind me, I wondered if it was a bug or if this app was literally a scam. Boo! I jumped Fucking and hell. shouted. And right in front of me was my colleague, Ian, wallowing in laughter. Mm. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't help it. Here, Get you forgot. Fucks, Ian. Oh, no, Ian can fucking get in a drain. Ugh. Get in a drain. Um, sorry, I couldn't help it. Uh, here, you forgot your tips. And he uh -huh, handed me a few so. bills. Next time you do that, I'll empty my pepper spray in your face. Yeah. Yeah, good. Safe in my car, I finally managed to laugh it off and figured that at least I had proof that the app worked. The app never triggered again after that. Until tonight. Oh my God. I'd just finished a long evening and I was exhausted. All I wanted to do was go home and go to bed. As I was walking alone in the cold night with just enough strength to look at the tips of my feet without falling asleep while walking, my mobile vibrated and I picked it up thinking someone had sent me a text message. You are being followed. Oh God. The appearance of the message caught me no, off guard. No, hello. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the appearance of the message caught me off guard and woke me up all at once. I looked around. There was no one and nothing around at this late hour and the temperature was negative. Negative. What's that mean? Oh, uh, in the negative. Nine yeah. minus one, innit? In it. I thought back to the only time it had gone off and Ian's joke. He knew perfectly well by now that I didn't find it funny and I had made it clear that I hoped he wouldn't do it again or he would get his ass kicked. I stood there looking back, looking for someone who obviously didn't exist. Still suspicious, I resume my walk, keeping my phone in my hand. After a minute, it vibrated again. Mm. You are being followed. So unnecessarily aggressive. I looked around again, but there was nothing. I started to panic. I was alone in the middle of the night and I was beginning to think something was wrong. A paper cup was pushed by the wind and the noise startled me. Is anyone there? I felt compelled to say aloud. Obviously, no one answered. If there's anyone, I'm warning you, I'm armed. I lied, trying to be as convincing as possible. When nothing happened, I started to turn around to resume my walk. And at the last moment, out of the corner of my eye, even as I turned my head, I swore I saw something moving in the shadows at the corner of an alley. It took me a while to process what I'd seen. At first, I thought it had been a cat. No, cats don't have white eyes. Uh. I walked quickly. You are being followed. Oh, Behind yeah. me there was absolute silence. You are being followed. Was it the sound of bare feet on the sidewalk I just heard? You are being followed. I clutched my pepper spray can as I took the last few steps to my car while looking around, like a mad woman attacked by imaginary birds. I closed the car door and I locked the doors. Finally, I managed to exhale the hair I'd been holding. <laughs> the hair. I've been holding so much hair. <laughs> Finally... I managed to exhale the hair. <sighs> I'll never be able to get it right. I'll never be able to. It's exhale and air. Finally. Exhale the hair. Finally, I managed to exhale the air I'd been holding in my lungs. Nice. <sighs> I didn't wait any longer. Not waiting to linger here, and I started the engine. Once home, I took a shower and got ready for bed. Nice. It had been a strange night. The more I thought about it, the more I wondered why the application had triggered so many times. Wasn't it possible there'd been a malfunction and I just imagined what I thought I was hearing and seeing because of the stress? After a while, I came to the conclusion that the app was bugged and that my overactive imagination combined with my natural fear of being attacked had done the rest. I put my mobile in my pocket and made several trips to the kitchen to throw away the remains of my dinner. My mobile vibrated. You oh. are being followed. <laughs> you are being followed. <clears throat> oh okay, God, voice. Terrifying. That was weird. My breathing stopped. I stood there for several seconds, staring at my screen. I raised my head slowly and looked around. I inspected every nook and cranny accessible to my view without making a move. The light in my bedroom was still off. Apart from that, I couldn't see any place where an intruder might be. I made my way discreetly towards my bedroom. Stop oh, no. stressing. You said it yourself. This app doesn't work. I continued walking slowly and put my hand on the light switch just to the left of the door. I pressed it. 
I took a few steps inside, but without a doubt, no intruder, ghost or monster had entered my room. Mm. As I returned to the living room, reassured, my gaze was drawn to the window and the night outside. And there, I saw a pale face. Oh, vile, vile! Glued to the glass, no! staring back at me with the two whitest eyes I've ever seen in oh. my life. After a second spent trying to understand what I was seeing, I screamed in fear. The police immediately dispatched a patrol car after my panic call. After a scream? Oh, the two, very good. <laughs> the two officers inspected the area around the house without finding anyone who resembled the vague description I'd given them. Even though they seemed worried, I'd obviously avoided mentioning the fact that what I had seen had white eyes and skin and a bald head. Uh, a baldy. A baldy. A baldy bastard. <laughs> After a while, they had to leave and told me to call back if I ever saw someone at my window again. I closed all my shutters and spent the night awake, a knife resting yeah. on the living room table. Absolutely. When day broke, I finally got the courage to leave my house. I looked around it and saw something the police hadn't seen or hadn't wanted to tell me. Just below the window, where I'd seen this thing, there were dozens and dozens of bare footprints going from left to right towards all the other windows. How did the police not fucking get that? They're literally, that. that's well, their Well, I think that's a story about how the police are inept. Wow. So, and men are vile. So. I don't, I fucking hate, honestly. I have got <laughs> the biggest hatred in me right now. Um, I liked that. That was nice. Thank you. I liked was it the nice? scary face. No, it wasn't nice. It was fucking weird. Okay. Um, would you like Creepy the Week? Creepy the Week. Creepy, Creepy the, the Week. week. Creep of the, the week, creep of the week, creep of the, the, the week. Okay. Hi, Hannah and Susie. I recently came across your podcast after going on a four-hour TikTok trawl oh, for scary stories. Stunning. And I thought I'd email you mine. Thank my you. name is Megan, and I'm 24. I still live with my parents in the same house we've occupied in the past 22 years. Yeah, same. At the time my parents bought the house, it was a new build. Thus, my ghost stories are far and few between. However, there has been a singular story that has stuck with me ever since my mum told me in my early adolescence. My great-granddad passed away when I was very young, a baby in his arms. His name was Robert, however, he was commonly referred to as Bob. Although I'm not able to talk to him anymore, I have always taken great pride in looking at the memorabilia. Don't know why I didn't like that. <laughs> that family had saved throughout his life, such as letters he wrote to my great-grandmother when they were courting, his walking stick and his tobacco pipe, which never left his mouth. Whenever I've asked family about him, their first comments have always been, he smoked like a train. Fit. <laughs> there was also one particular song that my granddad used to dance around the kitchen to, that being Sweet, Sweet Spirit. I don't know it, do you? Have I heard of it before? Sweet Caroline. It's not Sweet Caroline, no, but good <laughs> guess. Originally by Miss Doris May Akers. Mm. You learn something every day. My mum has always been fond of sharing stories of how he would slow dance with her as a young girl to that specific Aww. gospel hymn. Oh, it was a him. Ah, uh, that's why I don't know. That's it. why we don't know. He I'm unfortunately sadly child. went into hospital months after I was born, Aww. which eventually became his final resting place. My mum was always reiterated that he stayed to be able to hold his first great grandchild before he felt at peace. Aww. That's so cute. That cute. The weeks after he passed, my mum recalls smelling a strong smell of tobacco in the house, although no one in my family smoked. I slept as a baby in a cot next to my parents' bed, whom have always been extremely heavy sleepers. There was one night my foot got trapped in the wooden slat to my cot, so I was hanging upside down, Jesus Christ, oh. positioned in between my parents' bed and my cot. I'm not quite sure how it happened. However, as a hyperactive child who always wanted to run before I could walk, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I do not have any memories of this situation. However, I could only imagine that the blood was rushing... I could only imagine that the blood was rushing to my head and away from other organs, thereby depriving me of oxygen. That sounds terrifying. I didn't let out a cry or whimper to alert my parents to my predicament, which I had which had I done would have awoken them. They were unbeknownst to the situation that was until the radio downstairs came on at a maximum volume, oh waking my parents up and alerting them to me. The song, my granddad's favourite. Sweet, sweet spirit by Doris Akers, and the one they had played to lay him to rest only weeks prior. Oh. The particular line that woke my parents up was there's a sweet, sweet spirit in the house. Oh, my God. I don't know if that's a tune, but I've gone with it anyway. <laughs> there has never been any explanations to why the kitchen radio came on at maximum volume that night. 
as well as that particular song. The radio worked perfectly fine the next day and turned on at the same volume it had been the day before. Lamps at the side of my parents' bed worked, so I could not say that there was a power cut. It's safe to say the cot was very quickly disposed of, and my poor mother did not sleep a wink. However, I have always sought solidarity. I, mm, I have always thought that maybe, just maybe, my great-granddad Bob and guardian angel saved my life that night. Oh, because they Gorgeous. woke up to see her hanging out the yes. And they were like, bloody hell. Oh, that's actually really Parents cute. Parents, cute story, isn't it? Cute story. Oh, it's nice to end on a wholesome one. Oh, I love that for, um, for us. I love that. Actually, Hannah. Yeah. I've got a couple of um, stories. So basically, uh, last night at the game. Oh, yes. Um, I asked everyone, I was like, as part of my MC shtick, I was like, mm. write on a piece of paper some like romantic mishap that's happened. Yeah. And... Um, there were so many of them that I didn't have time to read them all out. And I've actually a few oh, I haven't yeah. even read. I hear you. Do you want me to... Um... Go. <laughs> this is just, just people's awful dating stories. Well, because it thought... is kind of relevant. Cause ha it's uh, horror, yeah. Um, Valentine's. Um, <laughs> and horror. I fell asleep while on the phone to her. I did try to end the call a few times. <laughs> I felt someone whispering in my ear, though. What? I felt someone just like going... Oh, this place is fucking haunted. It's haunted it? shit down here. Um, and then the other one is I love. <laughs> that one was what it was. Um, I lost my keys on a night out with a girl I was dating. She, oh, this writing is fucking something else. I can see it through the papers. She mental. invited me to spend the night at hers, and I insisted on sleeping on the floor. <laughs> Because anyway, so I did want to sleep with her, but I'd Very wait. Kind. I've I've something too many Hugh Grant movies growing up. What is happening? It was only after I'd aged a little, aged a bit, that I realised she actually wanted me in her bed. Fuck. What is happening? I know. I bet that that was a man. Yes, that was a definitely man. a man. Yes. Okay. Oh well, I'm God. glad I didn't read that out last night. Yeah, but that would have gone like a fart in a car. <laughs> Okay, here's another one. Um, my date asked if we should split the bill when we were hungover and bought two bottles of water from Pret. I said, I'm not bothered and paid for us both. He's a cheap fuck. What? So somebody said to them, shall we split it? So they, so obviously this guy's like hungover, he's in Pret, and he's, bought two, he's got two bottles of water and said, should we split the bill? I think that's horrendous. Oh, that is so ick. It's so ick. I also had a date with another man who came too soon. Five minutes in, she's put, then passed out. The next morning, <laughs> he tried to negotiate for another long wank. Still no joy for me. Excuse and me. And when I finally got near a climax, he shushed me. Well, honestly, I want to stop the world and get off, please. <laughs> that, stop the world and let so me There are so many off. oddballs <laughs> out there. Have you heard that song? Not even in a good way, no. Stop the world and let me off. <laughs> I think it's an Irish anthem. Well, I'd like to get off, please. Kark. And not kark. And not get <laughs> off in a sexy way. I'd like to get off. No, this I think planet. we all need to get off and end now. I think we should. Uh, shall we do a quick um, group of the way? Uh, not group of the way. What um, are we talking about? Uh, we get haunted. It's quick spirit box. Go on then. Just to see what happens. Hilarious. Okay. <laughs> he shushed me. What? What? Oh, what? fuck. Everyone's. Ooh. Do you want to ask it a question? <sighs> Is there a spirit in this room with us now? That's just said in the building. I said, do you want some cake? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, that's okay. Do you know what I'd like right now? Like almond cake. Yeah. <laughs> Spirit, do you have any... Have you... Could you... Is there any way you could send some almond cake? What's that? That's weird. <laughs> Fucking hell. Spirit, are you there? Can we have some cake, please? We wouldn't mind a cupcake. <laughs> that, like he it. says, he says, apple crumble. Oh, God, with custard. Yes. Rupal. Rupal. Rupal's <laughs> Rupal. Rupal <Shug> Race. 
We've got one more question for you. Um, Spirit, did Hannah hear a ghost in her headphones? What's it say? Do you want fifteen pounds? <laughs> Is it like a gambling ghost? It went. It's like it went. Drop fifteen pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it actually. That yeah, buy me transfer nice it to my bank account, my nice Monzo. Thanks, babe. Dinner. Mm. Well, that was stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. That was honestly episode sixty-five. I'm sufficiently scared. Yeah, it's quite a creepy episode. Yeah, actually. now I'm going to go to bed. Um, do you remember, guys, um, if you haven't already, join us on patreon.com forward slash ghost hunts. There we've got, is so much shit We've got an there. amazing ghost hunt coming out in York. Um, oh we're going to absolutely love it. Um, we went we've, well, We went to a bloody castle, Castle Howard, where we they filmed castles. Bridgerton, and we got spooked yes, as That's going to be out at the end of the month. But if you can't wait, there is a plethora of ghost hunts that we have done. Go and watch them on Patreon. Yeah. We can't wait to see you there. You've been stunning. And come and on we... tour with us because oh, we yeah. we've got we've got Edinburgh, Manchester, Bristol, Newcastle. Which to Birmingham. be fair are selling fast. They are. They're flying. I will say they flying, are going. Flying off the shelves. So and if we wanted to, we've got such a delightful show. Actually, just it's going to be great. Oh, and Wolverhampton was a stun. So come see us on tour. Find us more on Patreon, and we'll see you next week. We'll you see you there. Stunning Bye. hands in the wild. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, my friend. Fever forever. No, actually not forever. I don't want to just get me no. off. Bye.